days after D-Day, June 10, 1944. The German army was still firmly in control of most of France, and it was then that one of the most notorious atrocities of the war took place in a quiet French village of Orador sur glane Orador sur glane was a modern village with butcher shops, bakeries, cafes, schools, a church, and even an electric streetcar that connected it to nearby cities. On the morning of June 10th, a group of SS soldiers entered the village. They then herded the women and children into the church and the men into nearby barns. When the people were all safely locked in the barns and church, the SS began to kill them all. A large gas bomb was placed in the church, intending to asphyxiate the occupants, but it did not work properly, and so the SS used machine guns and hand grenades to disable and kill the women and children. The soldiers piled wood on the bodies and set the church on fire, even as many of the women and children were still alive. At the same time the bomb exploded in the church, the SS fired their machine guns into the men crowded into the barns. They deliberately fired low, so that many of the men were badly wounded but not killed, and thus could not escape. The soldiers then piled wood and straw on the bodies and set them on fire, burning many of the men alive. But the Germans did not stop there. They were ordered to disfigure the faces of the dead so that they could not be identified, and to burn the bodies. After they looted the houses and stores, they burned every one of the village's 328 buildings. A group of six bicyclists calmly cycling through the countryside happened to bike past Orador while the SS soldiers were there. They were stopped by the soldiers, brought into the village, and killed. One old invalid man was burned to death in his bed. Others were killed, their bodies thrown down a well. And an infant was baked to death in the local bakery oven. One woman, Madame Rufange, managed to escape from the church by jumping out of a rear window of the church some 20 feet off the ground. She ran as the soldiers shot at her, but managed to escape into a nearby field and covered herself with dirt and leaves. She had been shot five times, but laid in the field until the next day, surviving. A handful of other villagers escaped when they saw the soldiers entering the village. The German SS officer in charge was Adolf Diekmann. A few days after leaving Orador, he was killed in action in Normandy, still claiming the act was just retaliation for partisan activity. Regimental Commander Sylvester Stadler, General Heinz Lammerding, who had given the orders for such measures to be carried out against the resistance. SS officer Heinz Barth, who was in charge of 45 soldiers who he ordered to shoot 20 men in a garage. Most of the rest of the soldiers involved in the massacre were killed shortly thereafter in Normandy. The question, however, has always arisen. Why did the SS do this? Why Orador sur Glan? Helmut Kampf, a close friend of Adolf Diekmann, had been captured by the resistance in another town and sentenced to death. It is thought that this may have been a motivation for this atrocity. In all, 642 men, women, and children, ranging in age from a one-week-old infant to a 90-year-old woman, were murdered. Of the 642 men, women, and children massacred, only 26 were ever positively identified.